A very beautiful and distinctive looking game that I've seen here at PAX is called Figment, and this is the designer Jonas Buterson. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's as close as you can get in American accent, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me about Figment, because right away the art style struck me and I had to stop, I had to, I had to touch it. It looks yeah. beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Um, Figment is like a isometric adventure game featuring both puzzles and some action with like more heavy engines on, on, on the puzzles. But the unique thing in the game is actually it's taking place inside uh, the mind of a person. So the whole game world is essentially an abstract interpretation of what the subconsciousness could look like. So you're going through like the creative side of the mind, the logical side of the mind. Uh, and in the story, this person is actually going through a traumatic experience. So we're trying to help this, the mind overcome this trauma by facing its fear. So even though it's like a quirky, uh, jokishly game with a lot of music in it, yeah. there's still a, a deep and a serious uh, theme deep behind into it. Yeah, the art style evokes uh, somewhere in between Adventure Time and a Salvador Dali painting to me. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people have said that. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's definitely like, we did a game earlier called Back to Bed that was very much Salvador Dali meets MC Escher. Okay. And so for this game, we kind of took it to the next step and, and got inspiration from even more sources like, like you said, Dali, uh, Miyazaki, uh, Where the Wild Things Are and nice. stuff like that and just created an entirely new world that you could explore. Oh, how wonderful. How does an idea like that sort of bubble up with you guys? Uh, like I said, the first game we did, Back to Bed, was very much like a, a dream walker game. Yeah. Uh, but people wanted something where they could explore a bit more. They wanted mm -hmm. to go off the beaten path, essentially. So we decided to say, let's go deeper into the mind. Let's go down where dreams actually are made. And, and create an entire world where you actually have to, to go around and you know, could explore this world. And, and then we just started looking into like basic human fear and nightmares and dreams, what do we have in common and could we make mechanics out of this? Yeah. And then settled on that the main character is actually one of the voices inside our head. He's the voice of courage, trying to help the mind overcome its fear. Wow. And did you guys uh, you know, speak with actual psychologists or anything like that or re research? the actual maladies that might affect a person? Yeah, we spent some time reading up on like nightmare theories yeah. and fear theories about like, I actually found that uh, there's only a set amount of fear in the world, like different kinds of fear, and we all share them, but how we experience them are different, but they're all like a basic human uh, fear behind them, like the fear of loss, the fear of our own mortality and stuff like that. So we took those, the, the, the ones we thought was like the widest, the most widespread, and made them into mechanics in a kind of way. How big is the team? Between six or eight people have been working on it. Like I started out working on it like four and a half year ago when I got the, the initial idea for it. Yeah. Uh, but I think production wise it's been more like three years. Yeah. Six, seven, eight people most of the time on, the, on it. That's wonderful. And it, it looks incredibly polished. Do you guys have like AAA studio backgrounds or anything like that? Or have you all come up through the indie ranks? Uh, all of us have come up through like what I would call indie ranks. Some have yeah. uh, worked in other studios before, but not AAA studios. Yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous, gorgeous art. Was there a specific uh, painter or a specific artist that you guys look to for some of the inspiration? I like, like, like Delhi and, and all the others, but I think what we did here was we actually wanted to create our own thing. Yeah. But also, like our initial uh, art director, Adriel, was he, she had a very distinctive style, and it's definitely a lot of her lines still in the game. That's great. Yeah, that's great. How how expansive is the game? Like, is this something that we'll be playing for? I don't know, 15 hours or 20 hours? Like, what did you guys kind of pick? When we do testing, like long-term testing, and see how long it actually takes for a new player to get through the game, yeah. uh, it pops up around like six to seven hours. Okay. Uh, and that's without finding all the collectibles. And I, I know that some of the level designers has been very sadistic in hiding some of them. <laughs> and the, and the, the collectibles are very cool because they're memories from the mind. So they kind of like, when you get all the memories, some of the other stuff you've seen in the game might make more sense. Uh, so if you want all the collectibles, you have to spend some, uh, some hours on top of the, uh, the, uh, the six, seven hour mark. This game looks really, really nice. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. But I know I will see you.